All right, this morning, a special treat, special treat. We have a man who is a lawyer. Now, some of you may think that's not a good thing, but let me tell you, if you need a lawyer, it is a very good thing. All right, works for Hair Wynn. You've probably heard him on the radio. I mean, Mike Ermit gets around. All right, the man was in the Army. He was an Army officer, public relations for Fort Gordon, Georgia, okay. Mm -hmm. Was that when they had that big incident? No. <laughs> okay. He went to the University of Alabama, went to the Army, came back, and got a law degree at the University of Alabama Law School, top 10% of his class. The first lawyer in his family. It was a long period of grieving, <laughs> followed by phenomenal success in the law <laughs> practice. Okay. Now, he is married to the lovely, saintly, and understanding, Laurie. Laurie, did you come to here this morning? Yes. No. Where is Laurie? She's right there. Right. Okay, of course she did. <laughs> I thought she was sitting with a different husband. All right. <laughs> she got a better deal. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, two lovely daughters, Margaret Alice and Ann Lauren. Okay. Uh, Mike has been really uh, doing a lot of cool things. He was with the missions committee, ours, for over 10 years. Uh, he is the past chair of the Board of Management for the Downtown Birmingham YMCA. Okay. He is president of both the Alabama Civil Justice Foundation and the Red Elephant Club. I think that has something to do with animal rights. <laughs> okay. As far as you know. As far as I know. Uh, I have to say that after Tony's wildly successful presentation last week on alcohol in the Bible, now that was not alcohol in the church, that was alcohol in the Bible. Mike said, what if I do sex in the Bible? I said, no. <laughs> okay, please help me. The talk is titled One Another. As far as I know, it doesn't have anything to do with sex. All right, help me welcome a man who gave up a lifetime opportunity to be the color announcer for the Super Bowl today. Instead, came here to present the lesson, Mr. Mike Irwin. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. What an interesting uh, week we had. Um, how many of you were outside of your homes on Tuesday morning when the snow started coming down? Let's see a show of hands. Just look around. How many of you uh, did not make it home Tuesday night? Raise your hand. Look at that. Okay. How many of you had a loved one that didn't make it home Tuesday night? All right. Any of you have children or grandchildren that stayed overnight at a school? A lot. And do we have any teachers that spent the night at a school? I want to thank y'all so much. Y'all. It was, uh, we were fortunate that Ann Lauren got home at about 11 o'clock Tuesday night because of the grace and, and uh, charity of a, a few friends and neighbors and people we didn't know. But uh, I can't say enough for the teachers and, and other folks who stayed and took care of children who weren't their own. I'm sure it was a trying time, but uh, something the kids will always remember. I'm sure the adults will too. As you think back on this week, uh, what was something that stood out about the entire event? Is there something that stood out to you? Anybody? Strangers helping others. Strangers helping others. Yes, ma'am. That's great. And, and I think all of us can think of things that, that were reassuring about what the way people acted in the last several days. And you know, one thing I, I thought that I was so thrilled with is I didn't see any looting in the Birmingham area anywhere that I know of. There may have been an isolated case or two. And I was also very pleased that we had so, so little loss of life compared to what on Tuesday about midday I was concerned we were going to have as the temperatures were dropping. But I, that's exactly what I was thinking about is how did people respond when 
people needed each other. And why is it that it takes a crisis for us to act that way? And, and so today I want to talk about the encouraging word for us today is, is one another. And, and how do we take care of one another? And more importantly, what is Jesus and what is the Bible, especially the New Testament that we're going to hear a lot of scripture from today, say about one another? What I'd like to do over the next little, little bit is show you a number of scriptures. And I've handed out scriptures to about 20 different people. They're going to come up on the screen when your scripture comes up, if you'll read it, and then I'll make a brief comment, and we're just going to run through these, comment, these scriptures. And I want you to see the consistency of what we're told about how we act with one another. How do we behave with one another? How do we encourage one another? And the points I want to talk about is what does it mean to us to have one another, and what does God tell us? that those relationships should look like. So let's go through some scriptures and, and look at that. We'll start in Romans 12, 4 through 8. Who has that? For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to to all the others. Philippians 2, 1 through 5. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather, in humility. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Common sharing. <coughs> Being one in spirit <coughs> and of one mind. Value others above yourselves. Relationships with one another. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the hand, head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While, other, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. For we were all baptized by one spirit, 
so as to form one body. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. There should be no division in the body. Have equal concern for each other. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you has a part in it. John 13, 34 through 36. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love one another. You must love one another. Love one another. Romans 12, 19, or 9 through 16. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. <clears throat> be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Be not proud. Be willing to associate with people of lowest position. Do not be conceited. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Live in harmony with one another. Romans 13, 5 through 7. May the Lord who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring <coughs> grace to God. Accept one another. <laughs> Romans 15, 14. I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. Instruct one another. 1 Corinthians 1.10 I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and love. Agree with one another. 2 Corinthians 13.11-12 Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Encourage one another. <laughs> Greet one another. Galatians 5, 13 through 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather... Serve one another, humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Serve one another. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the body of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in all. Bearing with one another. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. Get rid of all bitterness, Rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of the lass. Be kind and compassionate one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Be kind and compassionate to one another. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, 
gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. <coughs> forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Teach and admonish one another. Bear with each other and forgive one another. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. <clears throat> now about your love for one another. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. Your love for one another. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11. For well, God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Encourage one another and build each other up. <coughs> Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Spur one another on toward love, but encouraging one another. <clears throat> First Peter 4, 8 and 9. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. <coughs> On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit the blessing. Love one another. First John three, sixteen through eighteen. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need and has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters with actions and in truth. 1 John 4, 11 and 12. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. Love one another. We love one another. These are some scriptures from the New Testament that talk about how we're to interact with each other. A lot of repetitive words. In a moment, I'm going to go through those again, and I'm, we're all going to read them out together. But before we do, I want to talk about some words that are not seen in those scriptures. <coughs> But yet, we sometimes individually or even collectively have been guilty of <clears throat> in our Christian walk. And I think that if we will avoid these types of things I'm about to talk about, we'll find that what we saw some this week will be more reflected in how we treat each other. Notice that not a single verse said, judge one another. Not a single verse said, condemn one another. Not a single verse said preach to one another. It said teach and admonish, but not preach. Notice not a single verse said gossip with one another. Notice not a single word said tell other people they're wrong. Notice not, none of those were a push down. Every one was a lift up. And I think sometimes we as Christians have created an image for ourselves. I talked last time about the Christian bubble where we're so focused sometimes on what others we think are doing wrong that we fail to provide the joy and the comfort and the encouragement that comes with the true Christian life which is about 
supporting one another, <coughs> about lifting people up instead of pushing people down. And I, I want to challenge us to think about that as we live our lives. When you think about the person who stayed with your child this week, when you think about the person who pushed a car out of a ditch, when you think about somebody who made sure somebody was fed, they were encouraging one another. They were lifting each other up. They were living a life that, that we would expect Christ would want us to live. And so my encouragement to you today is to think about the way that we interact with one another. Not just amongst us in this class, not just amongst us at the Homewood Church, not just amongst us as a brotherhood of churches of Christ, but for all who call Christ their Lord. And in fact, my challenge to you is to even act this way to those who do not believe in Christ. Because I really believe one of the things we struggle with in our Christian walk is how much we push away those who we should be reaching out and lifting up. And so I, I encourage you to act in the way that we were instructed in Scripture to everyone, not just those here today, but everybody you come in contact with, whether a believer or not. Now, as I go through these words we just read, what I'd like for us to do is, as each one comes up on the screen, I'd like for you to say it. Say it out loud, just together, and let's think about what we've just learned about and what we've been taught by scriptures to do. One body. Belong to all others. Common share. One in spirit. One of mind. Value others above yourselves. Relationships. No division. Equal concern for each other. Heart of the body of Christ. Love one another. Be devoted to one another. Live in harmony. Accept one another. Instruct one another. Agree with one another. Encourage one another. Greet one another. Serve one another. Bear with one another. Be kind. Be compassionate. Submit to one another. Forgive one another. Teach one another. Admonish one another. Build each other up. Spur one another toward love. Lay down our lives for one another. Love. We'll close with this great scripture. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself.